All right, folks. Now it's time for some sad news. You see, in just over a week, Civilization V will be released. And that, that's a good thing. We're happy about this. Civ V is going to be amazing. But it means that we may be saying goodbye to Civ IV. Now I know installing Civ V doesn't mean that Civ IV goes away from your computer. But in practice, I suspect that once I start playing Civ V, I may stick to it. After all, when I got 4, I stopped playing 3, and when I got 3, I stopped playing 2, and so on and so forth. Although, I, I do strongly believe that Civ IV is one of the greatest games ever put together, and it will be very, very hard to top. Um, you know, and, and the gameplay in, in 5 is going to be considerably different, so it's possible I'll return to it. But in preparation for this, I am going to be playing what may be my last game of Civ 4 for a very, very long time, and I thought I would take the opportunity to make a second Let's Play, because a lot of people really quite like the first one, so we're going to give it a go. Play now. And we've got to pick a map. Did I play on Fractal last time? I don't remember. Um, you know what? I'm going to pause this recording and I'm going to go... Okay, I just checked, and no, I played on an Earth-like map last time. Now I remember, I, uh, I think I used Earth 2 as my generator. Um, and, and that was very interesting, you know, about conquering the known world, but we did lose the, um, the sort of sense of exploration, uh, because we sort of knew what the world was going to look like. So, um, hmm. You know, there's so many different generators. I don't even know if I've played with them all. Perfect World 2F, which may have come with a mod installed. Random map that simulates Earth-like plate tectonics, geostrophic, and monsoon winds and rainfall. Okay, that, you know, that sounds, that sounds pretty good. Let's do that. Uh, interesting that it doesn't let me tweak the climate and sea levels. That's fine, we're gonna go with a standard world size. Oh, it's gonna do the old world, new world thing. Hmm. So what this means is, um, basically it's going to be similar to how things worked for most civilizations in our own history, where uh, there was sort of the old world, which is Africa, Europe, and Asia, and then at some point people went out to discover the new world. Now, of course, there were people living in the new world, um, but this, you know, it may consider this the point of view of sort of Western European civilization. Um, and so what would happen is here, everyone would, again, spawn in one big continent, and there would be some other continent somewhere that wouldn't be populated by any in-game civilization. There would be people there, but they would just be grouped in the barbarian, you know, just generic grouping, which is not entirely politically correct. Um, but it would definitely simulate the feeling of being a European and going over to North America. So it does give you a pretty good experience that way. Um, yeah, okay, well, let's let's do that. So we'll try to carve out a little bit of our continent, and then we'll decide at that point if we want to go overseas or not. Um, yeah, break up Pangeas. That's fine. Okay, the wrap. That's all fine. Now, what Civ am I going to play? Well, I'm going to play the Civ. Civ I always play in Civ. There's something about being the Romans that just feels right. Um, and they're probably the group that I've played the most because I just enjoy their history, and they're actually pretty good. Um, they were really overpowered early on. Uh, but, you know, it seems like a good way to say goodbye. And maybe the Romans will be the first Civ I play in Civ V. Who knows? Uh, so the Romans start with fishing and mining. They have a unique unit called the Praetorian, which is a replacement for the Swordman. Um, and they have a unique building, the Forum, which is a replacement for Market. Very nice early game, uh, unique... Uh, units and buildings, which is very good because the early game tends to be quite critical. The Praetorian is basically a swordman has strength 6, but gets a 25% bonus attacking a city. A Praetorian is just strength 8, as I recall, and has no city bonus. Um, so that's, that's the trade-off there. The Praetorian's far better rounded overall. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a price difference to create them or not. I don't remember the form bonus. So you got to choose between Augustus Caesar, who's industrious and imperialistic, Julius Caesar, who's organized imperialistic. So they're both imperialistic, which makes sense, I guess. And can I get a pop-up for that? How do I get information about this? Uh, let me look up here. Civ for traits. Because I don't know who to play. I mean, Julius is like classic old school. 
um, traits reference. <laughs> Uh, this is what we want. Alright, I just realized I may have... I hope I didn't script the sound by tabbing out or anything like that. Um, because it turns off the sound for me when I tab out, so I don't know what I was doing for you guys. Okay, so, imperialistic means you get, uh, great generals twice as fast, which is okay, but I'm not a huge... Like, I find you get plenty of great generals, so I don't know. Uh, you also get a 50% bonus to production of settlers, so that's nice if you want to fast expand. Uh, and 50% bonus when creating wonders, so they build in a third the time. And you build a forge at half cost, which is quite powerful. Whereas organized gives you uh, your civics cost half as much. And the civics aren't necessarily a huge part of your upkeep, but they're considerable. Uh, so that's a pretty good money saving. And you get to build courthouses at half cost, which is courthouses and lighthouses at half cost, which is pretty good. And I think that's the combo I want because imperialistic will let me expand faster and organized will let me build cheaper courthouses to help pay for my bigger empire, which is great. And I did look up the form as well, which gives you a plus 25% uh, great person growth rate. So that sounds much better. Industrious is good if you want to build world wonders. Um, and organized is good if you just want a bigger empire. And I'm going to go this route. And let me name myself. And for difficulty, uh, I don't remember, did I play a prince last time or emperor, monarch? I think I'm going to play monarch because I'm definitely not pro. Uh, I think emperor would be a little hard for me because I haven't played in a really long time. So let's go with this. Now, the higher the difficulty setting, the harder it is to get World Wonders, because the uh, the computer gets bonuses to production, and so they can often beat you to it. Um, so, really, the only way to get World Wonders at that point is to get industrious and really rig the system in your favor. I don't even know if it's recording while it's loading. Uh. Okay, and we're back. Oh, apparently F9 pops up a screen. Oh, so I lost my intro screen. Damn, that sucks. All right, let's take a look at what we've got. So we've started with the warrior, and we've got our settler. And it's placed us on the coast. It's given us some seafood, which is good, actually. We start with fishing, so that's fine. We're starting with gold again, which seems, like, insane. The last time we played, we started with gold, and it just represented such an enormous advantage. It was just sick. Um... It starts us off next to a river, which would give us bonus health, but this starts to be a lot of sea tiles, and ocean tiles are not actually very favorable, um, because they only start off with one base food. You have to build a lighthouse before they give you two food, uh, and even then, that's, that's effectively as good as it's going to get, whereas, of course, if you build farms and things like that, it's a lot better. So I am thinking I'm going to move one tile inland. I'm going to move right over here. And that will still give me access to, well, everything uh, immediately. Um, but, of course, the city will expand the, the borders. So, in practice, I'm going to be... Uh, I'm still going to be on the coast. This diagonal movement still means on the coast, which is important. I don't want to lose that. But it'll give me more ter territory that can be improved and worked. So, much better city. No doubt in my mind that this is where I want to go. And we will found Rome. Oh, it does mean we lost these cows. That was the one risk. I suppose I could have moved my worker up one and scouted that. So we are going to lose those cows, but I think Rome is going to have plenty. And maybe we can use these cows for another city. Um, I'm going to start with a workboat right away. The advantage of starting with a workboat, by the way, is um, it doesn't freeze your city growth. Uh, so your city can still grow while you're growing, while you're building it. That being said, I'm, it's using the cows by default, the, the normal worker allocation, which is great because having your cities grow fast is very important. But in this particular case, it's going to be most advantageous if I can ensure that the workboat finishes as fast as possible. And then we can build fishing nets on the clams, and then we can work the clams, which will give me two food and two trade instead of the three food. So overall, we'll be far, far ahead. Much, much better start. So I'm going to start with that. I will, um, I think I'm going to briefly explore north, but this looks like it's kind of jungly, and jungles are not, you know, you're not going to be settling there. So I'm just going to clear this a little bit, maybe just to 
to see a potential city spot to take advantage of the cows. And then I'm going to curl down here because this is probably going to be more habitable. Although, I don't know, this this may be just a, a peninsula or it may connect to sort of another continent. It's almost like this is Europe or something. I hope it's not going to be too Earth-like. If it is, I'm just going to restart because we did that last time. Ah, uh, yes, and what are we going to research first? That's a good question. So we started with fishing, and we have started with mining, which is very good, because we can take advantage of the gold right away. I suppose the thing we could do is start working towards animal husbandry, uh, because we're going to want to hook up those cows, and I think that's pretty good. Uh, one of the questions is, do you take hunting or agriculture first to get to animal husbandry? Um, I don't know. Um... I don't think there's any need for us to go hunting at this point. We don't need what it gives us. I don't think we're going to be rushing to archery. Because um, we're going to be rushing to bronze working and iron working pretty quickly so we can get those Praetorians. And even if we don't have iron, hopefully we'll find, you know, hopefully we'll have either a copper or iron, and then we'll have a military unit. We won't need the archery. So crossing my fingers, go in agriculture first. I'm going to ignore this goody hut this uh, tribal village, and the reason I'm doing that is because there's a chance that when my warrior comes through here, it'll it'll trigger something bad, like a barbarian uprising or something like that. If this were a scout, then I could safely go into the city, nothing bad would happen. But if I wait for the city's, my city's borders to pop, it'll open up this tribal village, and I don't believe anything bad can happen uh, in that situation, so I'm just going to let the city pop it for me. Oh, I figured there'd be more land up here. Well, the only way for us to take advantage of the cows at any point will be to place a city probably, like, here. Um, which won't have very much overlap with Rome, which is actually quite nice. The cows do give you some production, which is good, because it's got no other tile that could possibly give me any hammers. Um, oh, except like, this is a forest square, so it could get a little bit from that. that to build uh, a wonder here called the Moist Statues, which will really... Uh, help make this city useful. But I don't think it's going to be an early city. Uh, if anything else, it's not at risk of being taken by anyone else. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to steal that. So, here we go. It's expanded. And it's given us a technology. This is insane. This is literally the best possible outcome you can get from opening a tribal village. And I would have never expected it. And it's a really good tech. It's, in fact, slightly more expensive than some of the others. That is just ridiculous. We can switch to slavery right away. Uh, which sounds good, because switching your government civics leads to a period of anarchy. Uh, one year at this point is all the, the anarchy is. As your civ grows and as you do more significant changes to your civics, the anarchy period can be longer. But at this point, what, I, what am I losing? Yes, the beginning of the game is very important, but I've only got a, a, a size one city, and that's it. So I am losing, this anarchy has cost me virtually nothing in terms of lost production. So it's the perfect time to do it rather than uh, when I've got two or three cities. All right. Oh, there's not much jungle here at all, actually. That's not what I expected one bit. Hmm. Strange that there would be jungle here. Because it... I guess maybe it depends on the map generator, but the maps I'm used to having, they're sort of bands of jungle and desert. Ooh, Pakal, the Mayan Empire. He, as I recall, can be a little crazy, and he's very fanatical about religion, as I recall. So we'll have to see what happens on that front. All right, well, I'm going to continue sort of a circular path, but I'll cut a little higher. Ooh, a goody hut. I want that real quick. It's not taking the most direct route, but hopefully it's still a good one. Okay, so the workboat's finished. We can probably put it back on automatic. And, and, um, I guess I'll start. I was debating building something else first. Buddhism, Buddhism has been founded, and Maya might do it. We'll have to see. It says distant land, but I, since I don't know any of his cities, I'm not sure what it'll say. Um, yeah, I've considered letting my city grow by one before starting the worker, but I'm only going to have one good tile, which is going to be these clams. So, you know, I can just let it work that. That's fine. And it does work it because it's creating four food, which is the best way to create a worker quickly. And it's giving me extra commerce, so I'm going to finish my technology sooner. Little optimizations like that are very nice. I'm not oh, an expert at this sort of thing, but... Okay, we've got the...